Hi, this is Tom Fulmer with National Drug Screening, and I have an OSHA rule update for you. The Occupational Safety and Health Administration, or OSHA, has agreed to further delay enforcement of the anti-retaliation provision in its injury and illness tracking rule until December 1st, 2016. Now, several lawsuits have been filed challenging OSHA on this issue, and the U.S. District Court for Northern Texas has requested an additional delay to allow time to consider a motion challenging the new provisions. The anti-retaliation provisions originally scheduled to begin August 10, 2016, were previously delayed until November 10th to allow time for outreach to the regulated community and are now slated to go into effect on December 1st. Now, under the rule, employers are required to inform workers of their rights to report work-related injuries and illnesses without fear of retaliation. Uh, also, to implement procedures for reporting industry injuries and illnesses that are reasonable and do not deter workers from reporting, and incorporate the existing statutory prohibition on retaliating against workers for reporting injuries and illnesses. Now, on OSHA's Frequently Asked Questions page, it states that the new rule does not prohibit drug testing of employees. It only prohibits employers from using drug testing, or of course the threat of drug testing, as a form of retaliation against employees who report injuries or illnesses. Now, even though it does not prohibit post-accident testing, employers really should start planning to make potential changes in their drug-free workplace policies. In fact, it's important to understand that the OSHA rule will not affect DOT required testing or state drug-free workplace programs that require post-accident testing, such as for workers' compensation discounts. Now, if you're a non-DOT regulated employer who's not enrolled in a state drug-free workplace program and your policy contains any of the following, you should really consider reviewing your policy and possibly making some changes. So if your policy includes requirements to automatically blanket test anyone involved in an accident, if the policy uses post-accident triggers such as a dollar amount of damage, or if the policy requires drug testing after any workplace accident, no matter what the scale is. Now, many employers still do not have a policy or have not updated it or reviewed it recently. So here's a few tips to make sure your policy is OSHA compliant. Have the policy reviewed for OSHA compliance issues. There have been changes over the years, and if you haven't kept them updated, you may have some violation potential within that policy. You may also want to consider limiting post-accident testing to situations and individuals where there's a reasonable cause to believe that impairment played a role in the accident or incident. Another good idea is to provide training for supervisors to recognize signs of substance abuse, properly address employees if a reasonable suspicion situation arises, and also to be able to document effectively for reasonable suspicion purposes whatever happened within the incident or triggered the reasonable suspicion. Now, if you'd like assistance in any of these areas or want to set up a drug-free workplace program, National Drug Screening can help. Our team is also available for consultation and policy reviews. And you can check out our NDS blog at www.nationaldrugscreening.com to stay current on this important topic and get answers to many other common questions that you may face in everyday situations. My name is Tom Fulmer with National Drug Screening, and thanks for watching.